Who here has ever been a victim of bullying? I know I have. But have you ever considered that one of the most pernicious bullies in our lives is us, the way that we treat ourselves? When we bully ourselves, this can be termed as self-deprecation. And I'm going to tell you the story of Abigail, the self-deprecating cup. Every time Abigail would self-deprecate, a new wound would form in her sides. This wound is from when she called herself ugly and unlovable for not going on as many dates as she thought she would have by now. This wound is from when she decided that God loves her less because she forgot to read her scriptures. This wound is from when she called herself conceited and self-centered for feeling bad about the problems that she has considering others probably have it worse. Now, Abigail loved to serve and take care of others by filling their cup, but her capacity to do so was reduced because she wasn't filling her cup first. She wasn't taking care of herself first. And when others tried to fill Abigail's cup, it was difficult to accept their love, to feel like she had earned it. To quote the movie, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, we accept the love we think we deserve. It is so easy to feel like you're not enough in this society, from the toxic comparison culture of social media to religious perfectionism, where so many equate humility with self-hate and pride with self-love. There are many reasons that individuals will revert to self-deprecation. Some use it as a coping mechanism. When life gets hard, they feel like they can have control over their pain by compounding their pain with self-deprecation, presenting a sort of numbing effect. Others self-deprecate because they're concerned that they will no longer feel motivated to achieve their goals or become better unless motivated by self-hatred. Interestingly, according to a study found on Sage Publications, it was identified that you are more likely to achieve your goals when motivated by self-love rather than self-hate. The relationship that you have with you is the longest relationship that you'll have with anyone in your entire life. The way that we treat ourselves has a massive impact on our mental, emotional, and physical well being. And this is something that we can't afford to not take seriously. According to the CDC, in 2020, around 46,000 people died due to suicide. That is one person every 11 minutes. We have to do what we can to take care of ourselves and take care of those around us. A great recommendation is to talk to yourself as if you were talking to a loved one. You wouldn't call them an idiot or ugly or unworthy. You wouldn't say that you hate them. You would use compassion, logic, love, and you deserve that too. And when unpleasant emotions arise, rather than attempting to stifle it with self-deprecation, just feel the feeling. Neuroscientist Jill Bolte-Taylor says, that it takes 90 seconds for an emotion to come and pass. I know it can be so hard to sit with those unpleasant feelings, but to quote the dumpster across the street from J-Dogs on the south side of campus, you can't heal what you don't let yourself feel. That is one wise dumpster. Here's an example. Let's say that you were to get an exam score that you weren't happy with. You may be tempted to call yourself stupid, to question how you even got into this university. Rather than do that, first, feel the feeling, validate it, sit with it, and then get logical. Decide that you're going to start studying a few days sooner next time. And then get compassionate. Recognize that being a university student is not easy. You are doing a hard thing and you should be proud of yourself. You're amazing. So again, feel the feeling, get logical, and get compassionate. Author Emily Nagoski says that something happens when you stop deprecating yourself, when you stop re-injuring yourself. You begin to heal. At the end of this presentation, I will put up a QR code for a self-compassion self-examination administered by Dr. Kristen Neff, a psychologist that specializes in self-compassion. She'll offer you concrete recommendations for what you can do to increase your capacity for compassion. I highly recommend you scan the QR code and you take this quick quiz. Now, some of you may be thinking, I can't imagine a world where I don't hate myself. It's not possible. It is possible. 
between the ages of 12 and 22, I was in a constant state of self-hatred and self-deprecation. Now I've spent the past three years making an active effort to love myself and have compassion for myself. It doesn't happen in one night, but it is possible. It is so worth it and you deserve it. You deserve to love yourself. I know that we can change the world when we change our world first. Thank you.